I love all kinds of art, but I have a particular fondness for paintings that show people who are not just posing, but living their lives. So on the day before Easter, I drove up to the Moody Jones Gallery in Glenside, Pennsylvania, to see a true master of this kind of art. My name is Adrian Moody. We're at the Moody Jones Gallery, and we're featuring Ron Washington's work, R.L. Washington, who I've known over a number of years. And as you can see, his work is wonderful. It captures the essence of what it is to be part of everyday life. And of course, he's a well-respected artist from Philadelphia. Hello, my name is R.L. Washington. Majority of these paintings are entitled Flashback. I spent a lot of time on my craft perfecting these paintings in the last two years. I asked Ron how representing human experience became the focus for his work. Well, I started off being a uh, illustrator major in Tulsa College of Art years ago, and the hub of our work was based on humanism which entailed painting the human figure in certain environments to give a certain narrative. And since that time, I stayed with that genre. I asked him about his wide variety of characters and where he finds these folks. I try to include everybody in my paintings and not just limit myself to just doing people of my own color. Everybody that's represented in these paintings, this is my own personal Frankenstein. I created them out of my own head. During the course of the day, a lot of images will just appear in my mind. I'll just sit down and do a lot of thumbnail sketches. And then when I get the thumbnail sketch that I like, I Photoshop in my mind how I want the image to look. So the composition's pretty well planned out. It's planned out, but a lot of times when I get started, I have to make a few changes. Because as you go, it doesn't really come out like you envision it to come out in the sketches. So I make changes sometime along the way. Maybe I move a figure here, move a figure there. Change the color here, change the color there. Can you talk about your process? I do charcoal on canvas and then underpaint it with burnt siennas and whites, glazed, and then finally built up to the third layer, sometimes the fourth layer. Ron told me that most of these paintings were done during a critical time, not only in his own life, but in American history. During the COVID-19 shutdown, I focused on my mortality. Having lived six decades plus, COVID-19 was taking a lot of people's lives and I felt more obligated to paint much as I could when I could, and these are an archive of how I was thinking during that time. And you mentioned the Frankensteining of these figures, but you definitely have a love in your heart for these people. They're not monsters, right? <laughs> right. Uh, really, John, each person that you see in the paintings is a reflection of myself. It's like a diary of what I experienced, what I've read, and what I've gone through mentally and socially. So it's like an autobiography, my paintings, my own personal life. Most of Ron's paintings are about life in a black Philadelphia neighborhood, and he doesn't sugarcoat the harsh conditions there. I try to show the poverty stricken people. Having lived in poverty myself as a youth growing up in North Philadelphia, I know what it is to be poor and I know what it is not to have. And so although I'm in a state now where I'm pretty much comfortable, I just want to still put that on canvas to leave a legacy behind that the poor have to be shown to some kind of way. You have a couple interiors with kids. So what you're looking at in essence is really me as a young person. There were times when I was home alone and a cat happened to show up out of the shadows or a mouse ran across the floor unexpectedly. And I just wanted to show how I was as a youth. Speaking of Ron's youth, it turns out he was very young when the art spirit seized him. At age three, my mother said I was drawn before I was talking. 
and she used to buy the Sunday paper every week and I used to get the cartoon section. And I couldn't talk, but I would get a pencil and I would copy the cartoons. So my mother saw that I liked art, so she put me in various programs. And I would win several awards. Civic Center had a program years ago. I won first prize in that. But art is something I always love. Things that I couldn't say, I can paint or draw. Being a child that didn't have a father, I kind of felt alienated. A lot of the children that I grew up with had both parents home and I just had the mother home who raised four kids by herself. And so that left a stigma in me. I wanted to get it out in the picture form. And so I leaned towards art more and more. And then I had a teacher in junior high school named Janet Piazzi, God bless her. She found out that I had a little skill in art, so she took me to the art museum. I think I was in seventh grade. She said, Miss Washington, can I take Ronald to the art museum? He'd never been there before. I didn't know what the art museum was. And the first painting that I saw that struck me was a Picasso. The three musicians, I walked in and gravitated to it. And I said, wow, this is what I want to be. And so eventually I wound up getting a scholarship from high school. At art school, Ron would meet one of the greatest narrative painters of the 20th century an artist who would be Ron's number one influence. When I was a freshman at the Philadelphia College of Art, Sidney Goodman was a professor in the painting department. I went to the art museum and saw his piece, The Figures in the Landscape, which is a beautiful painting. Then him and I developed a relationship beyond the educational years. We were good friends. When Ron turned 50, his wife Linda threw him a surprise birthday party. And not only Sidney Goodman, but his other great teacher, Martha Erlbacher, both came. February this year, I was invited by Sidney Goodman's widow, Pam, to come speak to the children at Friends Select School. I had 15 paintings on display, and I talked to all the students. They asked me a lot of questions, and I tried to encourage them which way they should go, if they have a talent or desire to be an artist. So it's not going to be easy. But it's something you have to really want to do. You have to make sacrifices, work hard, and listen to your instructors, your teachers, and then you select. And you pick what's good for you as you get older and mature in the craft, and the things that you don't need, you put it aside. When did you realize that this was something that was possible for you to put your all into? I would say at age... 21, I really felt like this is something that I really wanted to go ahead and hit over heels for, come on all fours. And ever since that time, I was more determined than ever. Ron has worked with incredible dedication for over four decades on his art. But like most artists, he's had to work other jobs to get by. Yeah, I worked at the bank for eight years. I did freelance illustration for about five years. And then I wound up with the federal government for 27 years. Then I wound up retiring, teaching on the side also. Although most of Ron's paintings are set in impoverished North Philadelphia, he now lives in the middle-class Mount Airy neighborhood. There is crime here, but it's not as prevalent as it was in North Philadelphia. Have things changed a lot in North Philadelphia since you were a kid? Indeed so. It's a lot worse now than it was when I grew up in the 50s. I go by some time and I reminisce on how things used to be and things have gotten worse now because of the economy and the lack of education, crime and murder. And of course, you know, in Philadelphia, it's really gotten bad. Tell me about this painting and the psychological ramifications that you put into it. Bid for freedom. I mean, a young fellow is walking into the doorway. He's getting away from the crowds of people that's in front of him. I feel like a lot of times people don't show you who they really are. They look away from you. And this is why a lot of my figures really don't look directly at the viewer. If you notice the majority of their paintings, they're looking down, they're looking away, and you can't really tell their true identity. A picture of our society and our world in which we live. We're inclusive, but then again, we're not. People want to hold you at arm's length. How do you break those barriers of people being scared of each other? Well, it's the nature of the time in which we live in, John. And these are treacherous times. And many people are faced with different kinds of challenges in, in life. And the only way they really can deal with it is to stay within themselves. People have a tendency to put up a veneer of being strong, but really they're weak internally. 
being with Ron, I immediately felt his empathy and deep moral center. He gives back to his community, and where there's weakness, he provides strength. I'm associate minister at the Rosa Sharon Apostolic Church in North Philadelphia. 1214 West Lehigh, so I do go back and we have programs in the church where we serve the community, we give them clothes, we feed them, and we give them open opportunities to bring their children to church, we teach them whatever they need, we kind of supply that need. So I thank God for the gospel element of my life too because it's a balance between the gospel, sharing good news to those as impoverished and poor and going through a lot of destitute situations, and then doing my artwork, which is sort of a relief or a way of me leaving something behind when I leave. Have you ever shown them at your church? No, because when you're talking about spiritual and natural, you're going into two different worlds. And we pretty much stay to the spiritual world in our church. But music's allowed. Oh, music is allowed. You're right. You got me there. Yeah, well, and art is just a kind of visual music. When Ron mentioned leaving his art behind as a legacy after he passes, it won't be the only thing. Linda and Ron have been blessed with a son and daughter, now grown up, and two granddaughters. What made you paint Disney World? Well, Disney World, I just wanted to do something a little different than what I normally do. Did your grandkids demand that you take them? Yes, already. <laughs> <laughs> I told them to wait a couple more years when you can appreciate it for the money I'm gonna spend. <laughs> Do you feel like you're part of a larger Philadelphia art community? And if so, what's it been like? It's been beautiful. I think I am a part of the Philadelphia artist regime. There's a good feeling to be in the lineup with Martha R. Barker, uh, Sidney Goodman, and great artist Mo Brooker, and people that came out of Philadelphia. It's good to be added onto that list, because I really don't feel I'm worthy of it, but I thank God for just being mentioned with these people. It's a privilege. Is there hope for this world? Yes, it is. There's always hope as long as there's life. All right. As long as there's a Ron Washington painting, <laughs> these wonderful paintings. I hope so. Okay. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you can catch Ron's inspiring show through May 12th, 2023.